Hello and welcome to Floss Tube and Variety Show number 38. This is April 1st, 2022. It is April Fool's Day, but this is not going to be a fooling video. This is for real. I'm Emily Williams in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And we've had a spectacular day today. Not too hot, not rainy, sunny most of the day. Really, really lovely. Ah. Uh, so today is April 1st, and I will talk a little bit about some April Fool's things a little bit later. But we'll start with, as you remember, floss tube has to do with cross stitch. So I'm going to show you some cross stitch related things I'm working on or thinking about working on. And variety show means something else. So we'll see what we talk about today. Anyway, thanks for joining me, and I have a few new subscribers. I appreciate that. I hope you will continue to enjoy the videos and find something of interest. And to all of you returning folks, glad to have you, very much so. Um, so let's get started with cross stitch, though. I have been working on the purple sampler. I picked it up again. Most of what I'm putting into it so far have been from this Ultimate Sampler Motifs source book by Brenda Keys. But my most recent addition to the sampler is actually from one of the designers I showed, I think it was last week, you see that? Cute little owl. Just think that's amazing. And while I was stitching it this afternoon, our own owls out here in the woods got going. You know, they, um, they call it a hootenanny when a bunch of owls are calling back and forth. We have at least two here that are our regulars so we've had for many years. And there may be another one. I was trying to discern the voices earlier. Last night I was sitting on the deck for a little while in the evening with a fire in our fire pit and I heard the owls then too. So springtime, they're I think more vocal. And they're also vocal earlier in the day, not, not just in the evening or in the nighttime. So that, anyway, that was fun. That's a little owl. I'll show you Flea Market Flowers, which is Lori Holt design. And I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying it. I finished this big flower in the corner, so you can see how far I've gotten. I'm not quite half, I would say, um, in terms of the number of stitches. This flower right here is over 1,200 stitches. It's not, uh, not for the faint of heart to go about this, but I'm enjoying it. I like it. Um, I won't go into things I'm not happy about about it because it's just fine, right? Um, I'm going to show on Golden Kite. I mean, on Golden Kite. Yes, I always try to do that because I, I think I get it mixed up with the movie. The Golden Kite design under the roof of Blue Ionian Weather. And I'm going to show you that I've gotten quite a bit done in this part of this big rose bush. And I've decided, even though I didn't get much done from the last, I think two videos ago is when I showed it, I just have to keep at it and keep showing it because eventually it will get done. I am about 30%, 35% done with it. So my original thought was it would take me a full two years and maybe longer. And I think I'm on pace for that. I started it almost exactly a year ago. So yes, I know it seems like I couldn't be on pace to finish it in one more year if I'm only 35% done with it now, uh, maybe. So I'm now going to show, this is, I did not do this. This is called Dinner Call. And it's uh, from a painting by Donna Barton. Sorry about that crease in the fabric. I'm not sure. I think you can see well enough. Um, so I, I assure you that I did not do this. And why am I showing it, you may wonder. Well, some of you who have been watching for a while know that I did show it back last fall sometime. Here's the pattern. And this is the piece right here. 
And you see that there's two other things in this pattern. There's three geese by themselves and three rabbits. And also you can just stitch the geese without the house in the background. And my friend Cindy and I were talking about cross-stitch in years gone by because she did a lot of cross-stitch back in the day. And I did a lot of cross-stitch in, back in the day. And I actually had started that piece and she had almost finished it, but she stopped short of finishing it. And she didn't, she had no interest in finishing it really. And I said, well, I'll finish it for you. And so all she had left to do was uh, backstitch around the feet and the bills of the geese and their little tiny French knot eyes. She doesn't like to do French knots and I love to do French knots. So I finished, finished this up the last few days in terms of the feet, but here's the thing. And I, I did the eyes, as you can see, aren't those cute little black beady eyes that worked out pretty well. Um, I don't, I'm not really thrilled with the back stitching on the feet. Now I did it the way the pattern says to do it and the way she did it. But I actually think it's the wrong color. I think the instructions are wrong because I doubt that you can see this, but if you pause the video and zoom in, you might be able to tell that the feet in the picture are outlined in probably dark brown or something, maybe black. But this, the instructions say to outline them in a color called light tan. Now, Cindy had a kit, so she's doing it from a kit. And I did what she, I mean, she had started doing the feet, and so I continued it that the same way she was doing it, which is also what the instructions say. But I, I'm not convinced that that's really right. So that was, that's one of the reasons I don't want to do the bills. Uh, and also I don't think the bills need more outlining, but I have been working on that. Now I have this tiny little start myself, which is just the, the I mean, I could unfold the fabric, but this is the top corner of the picture and the, the flowers are here and then the geese start down here which I, when I saw how beautiful this is, her, her version of it, I mean, her completed now picture of it, it made me want to stitch it. But when I was working on the back stitch, I realized there's a lot of fractional stitches in this, which it's not that I can't do them, but I don't love it. I don't love it. So I'm not, really excited about getting my own out and working on it. So I think I may just say, look, here's Cindy's. I'll look at it for a while and I'll give it back to her in a few days and maybe she'll do something with it anyway. And speaking of Cindy, at the end of this video, I have a treat for you. At least I think it's a treat. Um, so she's my quilting partner, and we, uh, well, we thought we were gonna do a YouTube channel, and we may yet do a YouTube channel, we just haven't gotten it going, but we had a little video fun. And I, when we get to, to the end of this video, I'll say a few more words about that before I tack it on at the end, but you will not wanna miss it. You will want to stay tuned. Uh, also on the cross-stitch front, not talking about the video yet at the end of the channel anymore. Um, remember I finished this, which this big pin cushion thing from this pattern by Blackbird Designs. And I'm going to start this. This is a little needle roll, um, a needle roll, I think that's what it's called, or pin roll or something. Um, on the same fabric that this was done on. And you can't really see what this is because it's rolled up. It's a little, made into a little cylinder, but it's a strawberry and a bird and a viney thing and the date and an initial. And it's, you know, it's sort of related design to this. And so I'm gonna do that. And this is the Blackbird Weekend. Blackbird Weekend is the first weekend of every month. 
and there's a stitch along on social media which has the hashtag BBD Weekend Sal. Blackbird Designs is what the BBD stands for. Sal stands for Stitch Along. Stitch Along. Um, and I've been participating in that for many of the weekends in the past year. And I think this weekend I'll do that. This is the first weekend of the month, so I'll start that little needle thing and I'll show you next week. And while we're talking about Blackbird, I'm going to show you two new pattern things I got. This is a heart, a heart Remembers is a collection of designs by Blackbird. And it's, you know, it was just released or re-released at uh, the Needlework Market, which just took place in Nashville a few weeks ago or last week, maybe. And it has many lovely things in it. Um, and I bought it because it's Blackbird and it's nice to look through. And there are nice projects. I mean, I will probably do some of them. The real, the sort of the main project in the, the book is this one, which is five originally was released as five different charts. I'm sorry, there's a crease in the middle. It's hard to see it, maybe. Five different charts. Um, and the idea is you do it on the same count of linen, but on different colors, and then you stitch it together to form one thing, and then you frame it. And of course, you don't have to do it that way. Here's on the front. You don't have to do it that way. You can... Um, stitch it all on one piece of linen. And I I actually like all of it, except for the one that has the words here in the middle, almost the middle. That says that the verse there, or the words say, I cannot count my day complete till needle, thread, and fabric meet. And that's not a terrible um, sentiment for me, because I certainly love cross stitch and sewing and other needle crafts, but I don't know that I would want to sort of perpetu or save forever that that saying as being connected with me because there are many days that are very complete where I have not taken a stitch. So, I mean, I know maybe I'm being a little too literal or something. And perhaps I could just not stitch that panel. Just leave that one out. That could be, that's an idea. Or maybe I could put some other verse in there. Anyway, I do like it. I do like it. We'll see. And another one I bought is this one called uh, It's Spring Fever. And I like, I like that. So we'll see. Unfortunately, this one does not... Oh, it, this one does have a DMC conversion. It's the other ones in this book don't, which is a problem because... I don't have a local needle workshop nearby, and I like DMC, and I have DMC, so I have to work out what colors, what DMC colors work in the case like one of those, because I would want to do it in DMC, I think. And I might also want to do it on Ada and not on linen, because I haven't really stitched much on linen. But we'll see, we'll see. And one other thing I'm going to show is, uh, those of you who watched the last couple videos know I was working on a piece by uh, Stitchy, Stitchy Princess on Etsy, which was called Forest Foxes. And this is another one of her designs. She's a Ukrainian designer. And this is a Ukrainian girl. And the sunflower is the U Ukrainian flower. And here are some nice stylized clouds in the sky and the sun right there. And I am going to stitch this, I think. Um, I've got it from her shop. And I'm gonna stitch it. I have some gray Ada coming. I couldn't get blue Ada, which is the same color that I did the foxes on, but the gray Ada will look nice and there'll be two companion pieces. They have the same number of stitches, so they should turn out the same size. 
And I don't know what I'll do with them. Maybe I'll make little pillows or something that finishes to about six and a half inches. So that is what I've been working on in cross stitch. Now, last year on April 1st, I was part of a texting group of fans of the North Carolina Tar Heels. And if you've watched my channel the past few weeks, you know that I am a big fan of the North Carolina Tar Heels, particularly this time of year of the men's basketball team. And the men's basketball team had been coached, was coached up until this season by Roy Williams. And Roy Williams was beloved and he was everybody's hero and we like to imitate him and so on. And one of our friends in this little texting group at 7 a.m. last April 1st texted us and said, did you hear exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point, Roy Williams is announcing his retirement, exclamation, exclamation, and of course. Well, I thought, huh, is he really? And I went looking on the internet and there was no such news. And I said, ha, huh, Sean, you are April fooling us, aren't you? And he said, yes, April fools, April fools. Well, about an hour later, the athletic department announced that Roy Williams was giving a press conference at four o'clock to announce his retirement. I mean, really, we were shocked. And I immediately texted my friend Sean and said, so tell me, what lottery numbers should I pick this week? And, you know, where is the where is the treasure hidden? I mean, it just seemed amazing that that was his April Fool's joke, and it turned out to be true. So we've had this past season with Hubert Davis as the head coach of the Tar Heels, and Hubert and his family used to go to our church he now goes to another church in town, and he's a great guy, a great guy, and it seems a great coach because our team made it to the Final Four against all odds. It was really, we were not expected to make it to the Final Four. And another team that made it to the Final Four is Duke. Now, you may remember See, I normally record on Friday, and on April 5th, the final game of the regular season took place, which for the Tar Heels is always against Duke. This year it was against Duke at Cameron Indoor at Duke's stadium, and it was also the final home game for their head coach, the very famous um, Mike Krzyzewski, Coach K. Krzyzewski starts with a K if any of you are not from around here. And it was amazing because we were not favored to win that game at Duke's home field, home court, on that very momentous day when a big retirement celebration was planned for Coach K. But we did. We not only won the game, but we won it by 14 points, I think, I think or 15, by quite a margin, a significant and decisive margin. So that was pretty thrilling for Tar Heel fans. And tomorrow night, Carolina faces Duke in the Final Four, in the semi national semifinal game. And I've put some details down below. You can get, you can watch that game on TBS. And the tip off when I when I created my um, description box content, the tip off was scheduled for eight forty nine. So possibly then. But that is the Carolina Duke rivalry in men's basketball is possibly the most significant rivalry in college sports. So it's going to be an amazing game all week. I mean, I saw somebody earlier this week in um, on Facebook say that the whole state this entire week since it was realized that Duke and Carolina were going to play in the final in the semifinal round. The, the Saturday, that the entire state might come bust before the game takes place because it, it tensions and emotions and team spirit is so high when it comes to men's basketball, but especially with regard to this rivalry. So that is what I'm going to be doing tomorrow is watching that game. Now we're having a few friends over to watch and we always have 
Tar Heel Brownies on big games when we watch. Now, Tar Heel Brownies, I actually am including the recipe in the description box. So if you would like to make Tar Heel Brownies, they're very easy. I encourage you to make them and you can participate in our little Tar Heel basketball watching routine while you watch the game yourself. So what we do is we have the brownies, they're ready to go. And when our team needs us to eat brownies, we pass around the brownies. Now, any of you who are high church, um, Episcopal or Catholic, or maybe Lutheran, I hope that you will not be offended by what it is we do next, because we do not mean any disrespect to Christianity or to those denominations or to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ whatsoever. But we, I, I take the, the tray of brownies and I hand it, I hold it to the person and I say, go heels. And they say, and also with you. And they take a brownie. And then we eat the brownies. And it, we do it all in fun. It's very funny. We think it's funny. Anyway. And sometimes it's amazing. We eat the brownies and our team does better which is why we took a regular old recipe called All American Brownies in the cookbook and have dubbed it Tar Heel Brownies. So I encourage you to make a batch and you can do our little ritual yourselves. But do not say go Duke because you'll probably choke on brownies if you say go Duke and then eat a brownie. That's not right. If you want to root for Duke, then you have to go and buy your own special snack food in honor of Duke. That's that's all I have to say about that. Okay. Um, so that, anyway, there is a recipe in the description box. And for any of you who are new subscribers, again, thank you. Or if you are longtime viewers and you didn't realize this, the description box of every video includes information about things I talked about. In particular, if there are patterns or games or books or whatever that I mentioned, and I can tell you how to get it yourself, I do. Some things I've shown are out of print and are not available, or at least not available that I know of, but everything I talked about today is available. So I'm going to leave you now with um, a video, it's less than two minutes, of my friend Cindy and me. Now we made this video over a year ago because we thought we might start a YouTube channel to promote our quilting business. And we actually made another little video before this one where we thought, where we were trying to decide what we were gonna call our business. And we have not yet decided, so there's nothing in this video that's gonna give you a clue as to what we're calling it. But I say, and I open the video saying, um, welcome to Pins to the Window, because that is uh, something that we remind ourselves of when we are pinning a quilt onto our long arm machine, that the pins are supposed to go on the window side of the, of the fabric. So there's a window in the room. But anyway, we, this was a little sample video. The video ends where we ended it because that was all we could do. So I hope you enjoy it. And in the meantime, many blessings to you friends. Yeah, so we're gonna have to have some fluff at the beginning until the camera start stops jiggling. Wobbling. We can sing a little song. All right, let's have a little song for our studio. Okay. <laughs> you think that? We'll get Byron to write one. <laughs> we'll get Byron to write us some theme music <laughs> that we will sing <laughs> while we wait for the camera to stop jing. Oh, you could use the ukulele. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We'll be the singing quilters. You could bring your violin. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So welcome to Pins to the Window. This is Emily and Cindy. Hello. And in the background, you can see our sewing machine, our quilting machine, and it has a gorgeous quilt on it. You don't have to move aside. I'm just showing more of it. Oh yeah, it is just beautiful. And you should see the quilting that Cindy's doing on it. It's quite beautiful. And 
Also in the background on the wall, you can see one of our dream panels. This is the one Cindy did um, last April or so. And then there's another one on this side, which we'll show you some other time, which I did, which I could show you now, except the camera would jiggle forever. And then you would all tune out because you'd have to go to the bathroom and throw up. <laughs> That's what you wanted to hear on the video. This is actually a video about quilting and quilt making. <laughs> And we have a lot of fun, don't we? <laughs>